So having described uh, some of the basics of double patterning, I wanted to show you a uh, layout of SRAM cells for across different technology generations. So this one is for say a 90 nanometer technology and this one is for you know a 32 nanometer technology. And surprisingly, you know, the statement that was made uh, uh, in this case by Intel that, you know, they have been able to improve the fidelity of their lines going forward from uh, each generation. So, you know, keeping the lithography uh, uh, wavelength staying the same, the fidelity of the lines in these SRAM cells has actually improved at every generation. So that seems, you know, a very... Uh, that seems to be a surprisingly, uh, uh, you know, very surprising statement. How is that possible? So what I've done in this case is essentially taken those two images and I've made them the same size. So these are SRAM cells at uh, layout of SRAM cells at 65 and 32 nanometer technology. And I've made them the same size. No, they're not the same scale, but they're the same size. So what you immediately see is... Uh, uh, the 32 nanometer cell has you know a much better fidelity of your line so you know look at the lines here they look very very high fidelity as compared to say a 65 nanometer uh, technology where you see you know fatter lines uh, f you know so you see a fatter uh, line at the edge and then you see a skinnier line in the middle so actually the fidelity of these lines has improved so how is that you know how is that even possible because everything that you know variability uh, uh, is increasing as you go down the technology generation you have you're keeping the wavelength same so how are you improving the fidelity also you know this line is actually if you see it has a dumbbell shape so it's uh, it's you know fatter at the edge and it's skinnier in the middle so the reason why this used to happen is because if you have you know if you want to pattern something like you know a rectangle uh, due to you know edge effects and proximity effects it will actually you know broaden out on the edges and it would skinny down on the center and you would what you'll actually print is this dumbbell kind of a shape so to avoid that you know what people have been doing recently that they actually just print straight lines so what they do to enable this pattern is you start with essentially a set of straight lines so that is shown here and you know these are not these are you know long straight lines and where you want to where you want to you know cut them off you do another lithography step so you don't you do a multiple number of other lithography steps which are perpendicular to these set of lines so you do all these lithography steps in this case you know you do one and you know maybe one or more than one lithography steps which is perpendicular and so you pattern one set of resist and you just pattern it in one direction then you pattern the same layer of resist in the perpendicular direction to this original direction and combined you essentially get this pattern so you know i i find it you know very interesting that you know the fidelity and you know of the lines has actually improved and this is uh, so i wanted to point out how it's actually achieved so let me take the liberty of showing you one more image so this image corresponds to the sram layout uh, from the latest technology generation note from Intel so this was announced in May of last year and it what it shows is essentially the 22 nanometer technology uh, which was uh, using FinFET transistor and uh, so you know the question I want to ask is you just depending upon you know what we have covered so far can you uh, tell me you know which which uh, which double patterning technique does it use? So it's uh, it's clear that it uses double patterning technique. And which one is it? Is it L E L E? Is it L F L E? Or is it S A D P? And you know, you looking at it, you can actually tell what they have done. You know, can uh, first of all, you can tell whether they have used double patterning, or whether and which type of double patterning they have used. So, you know, to point that out, let me uh, label some of the things on this picture. 
so let me actually I have already done that for you so let me bring that up so what I have done here is essentially you know I have uh, you know what I have done is I have labeled these lines and I have actually tried to measure the spacing between these alternate set of lines so what I measured here is essentially if these two set of adjacent lines they have a spacing of x between them and the next set of adjacent line has a spacing of 1.2x between them so you know so what you know there are the between adjacent lines the spacing between them is actually consistently uh, either x or 1.2x so what it you know first of all what it means is okay they have you will actually double patterning because you know if you use just single patterning you will have very uniformly spaced lines and what it tells again is that you know they have it gives you some clue to what kind of double patterning technique they have used so you know as as i mentioned you know the spacing between alternate set of lines is actually varying so you could this you know this could happen in two ways one by error and one by design so the way it can happen by error is suppose say you are doing a technique which involves the overlay say l e l e or uh, l f l e you would uh, actually pattern define one set of lines and you would overlay another set of lines between them and this was actually let's say it was supposed to land dead in the center but due to uh, this overlay issue it didn't so it you know it landed uh, so these other set of lines they landed uh, somewhere displaced from the center so in this case you know you could you could have a spacing x and then another spacing 1.2x but this is you know not by design the only way you can achieve this by design is suppose is if you had done uh, SADP so if you had done using a self aligned double patterning technique and you had a mandrel which uh, you know had a certain pitch and then you had spacers around it and you know you use these spacers and you had this and what you could then be left with essentially is one set of spacing which is defined by your mandrel and another set so you know this spacing between these two adjacent spacers is defined by this mandrel layer and the spacing between these set of lines is defined by the pitch of your mandrel layer and so one is defined you know one set of spacing is defined by the width of this mandrel layer the another set of spacing between so this spacing is defined by the width and you know this spacing is defined by the pitch of your mandrel layer so you you can have you know two different set of spacing you know so this could be 1x and this could be 1.2x if you use uh, self aligned double patterning so then we reached to this conclusion that probably you know intel had used uh, sadp for their uh, 22 nanometer technology around finfet transistors another advantage you uh, get by doing sadp is uh, cd uniformity or uniformity in the width of your features what i mean by that is suppose you had you know since you uh, pattern uh, in sadp you uh, pattern or mandrel layer so you know suppose you had roughness in your mandrel layer so you know uh, you would expect you know uh, some line edge roughness in your mandrel layer and when you pattern uh, when you define a spacer around this mandrel layer uh, it deposits conformity so you know even though you had this roughness you would uh, get this roughness in the spacer too but since it's conformal you know the width of this line would still be constant so even though it's rough you would you know have more uniformity in your CD uh, because it's uh, it's a self-aligned and conformal spacer around your mandrel so that that's something you know which also helps in your device performance so that's another you know another advantage advantage in favor of uh, SADP technique 
So what we have discussed so far is how using double patterning. In particular, I spend a lot of time how using self-align double patterning. Using one exposure step, you could still obtain, you know, twice uh, the amount of number of lines or you could reduce your pitch into half using uh, this technique. So the next obvious question that comes to your mind is, you know, can you extend this further? Can you use this to, you know, uh, obtain a 4x doubling of your density or, or, you know, going forward, you know, can you obtain a 8x uh, increase in your density or can you decrease your pitch by one fourth or one eight? Or, you know, is it, does it only happen in multiples of two? Can you actually do it uh, another, you know, can you do it three times can you, you know can you obtain a tripling of your uh, uh, density or you know can you reduce your pitch by one third and the answer is yes and let me show you a few ways you can do it and you know it's a lot of fun let me show you a, a one way you can actually triple your uh, pitch density by using just one exposure so you know this technique over here this is self-aligned uh, triple patterning or SATP so again you know what you do is you start with uh, one mandrel and you know this is your initial layer and you define a set of spacers around it so this is you know these are self-aligned spacers around your mandrel but uh, in an SATP step you know we stopped here and we we actually remove this mandrel and we etch this pattern uh, into our uh, hard mass but let's not do that here so here what we do is you know we have this first spacer material and now this around this first spacer material you put the second spacer material so you know you put another second set of spacer around this first set of spacer so which is shown over here and what you do next what you can do next is you know take out this first spacer material so you know take this first spacer material out and you still have your first mandrel and you also have the second spacer so in effect what you get now if you compare as compared to this you get a three times of your you know three times the number of lines and so you know we have effectively tripled our density or reduced our pitch into one third and we have used, you know, we have used just one exposure step which was used to define this mandrel there. So can can you we do more? Can we can you can you can we do four times? So you know, yes, of course you can do four times as well. And this is uh, you know, I've drawn it over here. So this is using uh, uh, so what this is called over here is self align quadruple patterning or SAQP and uh, what you do here is essentially uh, you start again with your mandrel layer here and you define um, you know your first spacer which is self-aligned to the mandrel you, you take the mandrel out so you are left with this uh, pattern from the self-aligned spacer then you put another spacer around it so you know you put this another second spacer around so this first spacer layer now acts as the another mandrel layer. So now using this spacer as the mandrel layer, you put another spacer around it. And then you take this first spacer out. And now what you essentially have done is you have, uh, what you have done is now you have four times. So from here to here, you have two times increase in the number of lines and from here to here you have another two so overall you have you know you have quadrupled your quadrupled your aerial density or you know you have reduced your effective pitch by one fourth and you know we can keep on doing this so you know we there's uh, you know your uh, imagination is the limit there and to put uh, a test on that limit you know we'll have a few uh, question in the homework which will quiz you on you know different ways you can you know quadruple or uh, you know or five times your pitch density and so on so you know then you know so the th so what the sense I'm trying to give you here is you know whether or not UV comes in 
people will keep on you know reducing their so you know uh, whether or not uh, UV lithography comes in uh, people will continue Moorsla and you know Moorsla will keep on continuing uh, the 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 downside of you know doing quadruple patterning or doing quintuple patterning or doing triple patterning is that you know you your number of steps is keeping on increasing your complexity is again increasing you know you have multiple edge steps you have multiple uh, um, uh, you know you're adding more and more number of process steps so you know your yield associated with each lithography definition is going down and you need you know you need control at each of these steps so you know you when whenever uv comes in it will you know it will act to you know reduce these number of steps and uh, it will help but whether it happens or not the sense i wanted to give you is you know Moodla will continue on marching and uh, you know we have covered how how you know double patterning how you know going forward even quadruple patterning will you know allow you to double your pitch density or you know quadruple your aerial density and